One day a man was pulling weeds in his rose garden. He turned around and there was his five years old daughter tossing all his neatly piled weeds all around the yard. What happened next changed his life and perhaps history. Welcome everyone, my name is Nick Redmark. I'm a coach engineer and I bring to you tools for professional development daily, except when anxiety, perfectionism and other life circumstances come in the way. And today is story time. Meet with me, Martin Seligman, born 1942 in Albany, New York. When he grew up, Seligman was interested in philosophy and psychology. And thanks to a discouraging comment from his philosophy professor, he decided to go for psychology. In 1967, he earned a PhD in psychology at the University of Pennsylvania. And during his PhD, he discovered something interesting. If you put a dog on a machine that gives him electric shocks on one side, then the dog will jump to the other side. The more he do this, the more the dog will learn to jump. But what happens if there is a glass wall that separates the two areas of the box? At the beginning, the dog jumps and tries to overcome the obstacle again and again until after a while he stops trying and then even removing the barrier the dog will stop trying they discovered that to teach the dog to jump to his safety they had to physically move him to the other side a couple of times before he really started jumping again this phenomenon is what is called learned helplessness and earned Seligman recognition in the psychological field. In 1976, he became professor of psychology at the University of Pennsylvania. But something else was happening in the field. Psychology was focused mainly on mental illness and some psychologists had started criticizing that. People like Abraham Maslow, Carl Rogers and Eric Fromm. And now we are back to the rose field. One day Seligman was taking care of his rose and in his garden and his daughter was present and she made a mess with the weeds that he cut. And as he scolded her, she said, Daddy, remember when I used to whine all the time? Well, when I turned five, I decided to stop whining. If I could stop whining, then you can stop being such a grump. That was the moment that convinced Seligman to stop being fixated on what's wrong with people and start focusing on what's right. This led to research around, for example, learned optimism, and then finally to the talk that changed the field of psychology. In 1998, Seligman was elected president of the American Psychological Association, and that's when he decided that he had a mission. He said, it is my belief that since the end of World War II, psychology has moved too far away from its original roots, which were to make the lives of all people more fulfilling and productive, and too much towards the important, but not all important, area of curing mental illness. Psychology can play an enormously important role. We can articulate a vision of the good life that is empirically sound and at the same time understandable and attractive. We can show the world what actions lead to well-being, to positive individuals, to flourishing communities and to a just society. We have misplaced our original and greater mandate to make life better for all people, not just the mentally ill. I therefore call on our profession and our science to take up this mandate once again as we enter the next millennium. This led to a new era of positive psychology, which has the potential to change all of our lives. Think about it. This field was founded only 20 years ago. Meanwhile, Seligman has published 300 publications, 25 books, about flourishing, about authentic happiness and learned optimism. He's the 31st most cited psychology of the 20th century. And in 2017, he just got the Lifetime Contributions to Psychology Awards and he helped found the Global Happiness Council that published a global happiness and well-being policy report. If you're interested, we might talk about the report next time. If you're interested in this, subscribe and click the bell so you get notifications. Bye bye.